Hi everyone, welcome to my very first YouTube video. I'm Tracy from Tracy Ellen Art and I'm new to Fluid Art just this last year and I know I've been posting some of my artworks and people have been asking for videos so here is the first one and it's also a sandwich pour which is the first time I'm ever doing a sandwich pour so I hope this is helpful to people if you find it helpful please click subscribe to my YouTube channel below and hit the like button and let's go see what we come up with I'm going to try for the first time today a sandwich pour where I'm layering colors in a cup and then big layers of white and then colors and then big layers of white, etc. And so I've never done this before um, and I really want to do this for a um, for my house, for a room in my house. So I want to try it today first and see how it comes out. And hopefully what I'm looking for is the marbly um, kind of effect on the painting. So um, I will start with showing you the colors and the consistency that I'm using. And all of my paints are mixed with Floetrol and paint. Um, that's, that's all I'm mixing it with is the Floetrol and then um, however much paint to get the color and consistency that I need. So the first one I'm using is kind of like a charcoal gray, hoping you can see that. Um, and this is a combination of colors. It is the Liquitex Iridescent Graphite. It is the Extreme Sheen by Deco Art Tin and the Sargent Metallic Silver. So those, that's what I use to get that color. Um, so that's that color, that's the charcoal -y color. The second color I'm using is this light pearl lilac-y color. Um, and so that's the consistency in the color. And that is Arteza Pearl Lilac is what I used for that. And then I'm using this, it's called burgundy, but it's really a deep metallic-y plum, um, which is what I want. I don't really want the burgundy, the red kind of burgundy. And so that's that color. And this is Lumiere Burgundy number 545 is what I'm using for that one. This is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> Um, and the last one is a copper. It's a pearl copper. And so that's what I'm using. That's the last color I'm using in my layering. And that is Arteza Pearl Copper Gold is what that color is. And then my white, this is my white. And that is Artist Law Flow Acrylic White mixed with um, Floetrol. So that is my, that are, those are my colors. I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to layer my cups. So this is a 16 by 20 canvas and I'm going to use two cups to do this sandwich pour and I need about 15 ounces, 12, 12 to 15 ounces. Um, so I'm going to start layering. I may cut some of it out if the video is too long to do that, but I'm going to move this for a moment so I can show you the layering as much as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a thick layer of white. just going to go in the order that I have um, that I had showed you the colors so I'm going to put some of this charcoal -y color on top Burgundy. 
slow layering so that it doesn't plump, plummet down into the bottom of the white. I don't want it to do that. And then the copper. I don't know if you can, you probably cannot see this, so I'm going to try and bring it closer. See if that helps. Since this is my first video, I'm sure I'll be making adjustments next time I make one. So, so far we have three and a half ounces, so I want to essentially put about six ounces in each cup. So we'll do another layer of this. And then the lavender. So I am relatively new to paint pouring. Um, I started basically during the pandemic <laughs> as a way to um, help redirect some of my stress um, and became quickly addicted so I'm learning as I'm going so even though I'm doing this video I'm still learning whatever I need to adjust after this first time doing the sandwich pour then I'll try it again um, and I'll share as much as I can I work a full-time job, so I'm on vacation right now, and that's, so this is what I'm doing. <laughs> Trying to play with paint during my vacation, since we're not going anywhere. I don't think I put a thick enough layer of the white on the last that last middle one, but again, we'll see. So that is about six and a half, almost seven inches, I mean seven ounces. So we're gonna put that one aside and then we'll do the other, the next one. Maybe we'll put about two, inches, two ounces in here. I don't know why I keep saying inches. And I may go in the opposite direction this time. Apologize if the camera's not set up right. So, do the copper first. Then the plum. As you can s probably tell, I am in my basement, and so the dehumidifier may kick on here and there. My heater may kick on here and there because it's a little bit chewy. Um, in the summer, I am able to work in outdoor space, but um, the cold air is not conducive to painting and paint drying in the winter. So I need to move everything back inside. So I get banished to the basement for the winter. <laughs> Which is fine. Okay, let's do one more layer of colors. Again. I added the copper to have something warm since all the other colors are on the cool side so we'll see for the room I'm using this I may 
use a different contrast color or warm color with the purples and grays, but we'll see. With the marbly effect, I'm trying to get, I want more just veins of color and a lot of white marbling with the color. So again, I've never done it before. I've never done this this method before, so it'll be a surprise for all of us how it comes out. Um, some of the people um, I watch, so specifically on the sandwich pour, I watched a lot of videos or several videos um, with Sarah Mack. You can look her up. I will put her link in the notes of my video. Um, she did some really, really nice sandwich pours that I was watching and trying to. This one actually has a lot more paint in it, so I may start with this cup. And then use the next one as needed. Okay. So we have two cups of layered paint. This one doesn't have as much of a layer, so maybe I will do that one first. And for the sandwich, um, For the sandwich, we tilt up the canvas while we're pouring. I'll get that back to center. And I need two cups to prop up. We want to prop up the ends of the canvas to help help it to start to run down. I don't know if that's enough. So we'll see. I'm going to put some gloves on. Since it's also a messy process. Um, another thing is just to show you, because this is a messy method, I did tape the back. Um, I don't always tape the back. I don't tape the back for Dutch pours, which is when I use the hair dryer, but um, for ring pours and for this one, I'm going to assume it's going to make a mess as well. Okay. I'm actually going to start with the bigger one. So I'm just going to pour these paints in a kind of back and forth rhythm, slightly overlapping and let it start to move its way down the canvas. And I'm sticking my hand in paint from earlier. <laughs> Cut this out of the video. Okay, so here we go. Next one. We'll see. As long as this doesn't go down too fast, we can leave that there. This one down there, let it drip. Okay. Hopefully I have enough paint. I'm going to fill in these gaps with um, some white. And I'm going to take this down for now while I fill in those gaps. So. I 
because the colors in the cup and the designs in the cup were pretty or were as pretty as the painting. Okay, so now I'm going to fill the rest of my white. So what I'm doing now is just pushing some of the paint towards the edges to help the rest of the paint move. It moves better on a canvas that has paint than on a dry canvas. So we want, we're going to move this paint around to spread it around the canvas and this is going to help it. surprised at all the cells actually. I wasn't expecting it. So kind of cool. I hope there's not too many. Alright, let me just start by doing Move it to the side. I am gonna get a little bit more white paint, so bear with me as I cut some of this out. I haven't not been recording because I don't want to share. I haven't been recording because I don't really think I'm good enough yet. <laughs> I haven't been doing it that long. I don't think I have enough experience, but um, happy to share with what I do know and what I have learned so far in the last 10 months or so. And also, I guess, in a way, learning with you. So I'm just trying to spread the paint around. I apologize, you might not be able to see while I tilt this way. But I'm going to get some of this paint around these edges here. And then try to bring, stretch it out. down that way. So I think what I'm going to do is start, I'm just gonna go down this way really. 
down to this corner and then back up to center. And then I'm going to try to get down to that corner. Trying to get rid of some of that white. Now, maybe I'll turn it around so you can see the other side. I'm trying not to stick my sweatshirt in here because I forgot to put my apron on. Try to go this way since we're going opposite of this corner. I don't know, I might like that white corner here. <laughs> we'll see how things look when it's stretched a bit more. Back up. So, rule of thumb is to as much as possible bring your paint back to center every time. You stretch it to a corner. It's also practice for me remembering that the camera's there while I'm doing this and trying to get it to a place where it will, you'll be able to see it. I do like these colors together. It probably looks more orange on the camera than copper but um, I do like them. I just don't know yet if it's the color I want in this room. Okay, I'm gonna try to stretch a little bit to this corner. Still quite a bit of paint on here, so. Um, I'm okay with losing white and stretching back. Okay, now, do I, how much of that white corner do I want to lose, is the question. I do like it a little bit, and I also want to bring this Stretch it a little bit this way. But then I'm going to bring it this one and get a little bit less white there. Sorry. Okay, now I want to stop trying to have you see what I'm doing. See how this is a little bit overstretched, so I want to bring the paint back that way a little bit. A little bit back towards center. Okay. So I am really happy with this. It's really quite gorgeous, actually. I will um, bring you in for a close-up. However, um, I don't know if I quite wanted this much color. And I think, again, where that one cup that I did not put enough white in the middle of the sandwich um, might be why. Trying to stretch a little bit more in this way. I do like these two corners closer to me here. It's very much a marbly or granity type um, look. <laughs> now you know why the tape is there. If you haven't done this before, gonna go around and just scrape under here. Something I learned recently, while I always do scrape the bottom, um, 
I did learn recently that if you don't scrape it, it could, as it keeps dripping, it could um, pull the paint too much off of the sides. So you don't want to have a lot of drip. So I will, usually I will scrape as soon as I'm done stretching or blow drying or whatever I'm doing. And then a couple more times I will um, scrape again. So once I'm done with my gloves, I'll just go under there with a popsicle stick or a mixing stick or something and just getting that one corner that didn't seem to get enough coverage and then this corner didn't quite get to where I'm coming either so another good thing about being in the basement is my basement floor is concrete and it's pretty much speckled with paint. <laughs> so, um, okay. I think I'm done playing with it and manipulating it. Lots of lacing and cells, which is pretty awesome. I didn't expect it, but it's pretty awesome. And I like this little bit of like haziness over in some of these spots where it does look like a, um, a stone would look. Um, yeah. So I think I do like it. There's a, quite a bit of color over here underneath that white, which is what I was trying to stretch out a little bit more. Um, but as it dries, it may actually, um, you know, more may show up or more cells may pop up. So I will also show this dried result after this is dried. So let me take my gloves off and I can get a close up for you. Okay, so here's the close-up. This is the left, lower left corner. And I'm just going to go side to side, actually, since that's the way that the... Look at that. Cells. There's some really cool cells here, some really cool marbling. Excuse my light reflections. Some lacing that's kind of really awesome. Um, I really do like these colors. Again, I'm just trying to decide if I want the this much of the copper in the place that I'm putting it. But um, all in all, I think I may use these colors again for the for the actual painting. The paint.